Hi guys, and welcome to the Gabe and Bruce Show. Bring him from the yard, Yeah, in today's video, we're going to be reacting to some more Mr. Nightmare. He released a video like three days ago. Also, uh, I actually got a comment from one of the people that did this, that had one of the stories in the last one we reacted to. Um, other than that, basically, they were talking about how I took it seriously. Yeah, because that's a serious thing. I don't know why people would make a joke about that shit. If you make a joke about that shit, you're an asshole. That are, you just don't quite understand the grass of the world being a piece of shit. And it ain't funny. Other than that, enough of that. Um, either ways, we're going to be reacting to some three really creepy true arcade horror stories. This is by Mr. Nightmare. As always, I do not like copyright strikes. I got one a long time ago. So I don't want that shit happening again. So we're going to do this professionally style. So anyways... Before we get into the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, smash that notification bell to always be notified of any new uploads we upload to this channel. Either ways, we want to get to uh, 20 likes on this video, plus we're trying to get to 100 subscribers at the least right now. Go follow me on Twitch, I post some uh, gameplays there for you, for you guys. Also, I released some more music. Also, go check out the other guys that made it. It's in the links of those videos there. Anyways, link to the original video of this video here will be in the description down below. Anyways, let's get into the vid. gonna be a weird thing. So, also guys, my webcam is gonna be right here. So if you don't much see the video, go check out the original video, by the way. But the point is, we're actually watching this and reacting to this. So let's go. In three, two, one. Story one. This is one of those stories from my childhood that still just gives me the chills thinking back to it even today. It was October, and my family was on vacation to some family resort in Catskill, New York. It was kind of in the middle of nowhere, but there were a decent amount of other families at the resort. There were a lot of kids. I remember the resort being surrounded by forest in all directions, but the actual resort grounds were fairly large. I was eight years old. I was an awkward, shy kid for most of my childhood. I would follow the lead of my older brothers usually whenever in social settings. I'm the third child of four. I have three brothers. During this vacation, my older brothers Eric and Josh were mostly hanging out amongst themselves since they're closer in age than I am with them. That's true. My little brother Craig was only four, so he was Sorry if I'm about to laugh, but... This motherfucker's name is Craig. Let's get to laughing aside, this man's name is fucking Craig. <laughs> mm, laughing aside. Okay, let's be serious about this, so... Actually, I have a story for y'all. Um, I've been to Chuck E. Cheese, by the way, so I know what arcade system is. But my dad, he's played in arcades. Because that's what he grew up on. Sure don't know how to use an Xbox One. That's my critique. Gotta say they're good. Mm. Yeah. Either way, enough of that. I'm, I just want to question, is this image just for perspective? Or is this a real fucking place that this story happened? That's what I'm really questioning. Because this is where this story actually happened. That's a creepy fucking building. Besides the signs. The rest of the building looks like... 
the place people go to to fuck you up because it's the this looks like the place that you would least likely think is full of murder and shit but that's what most criminals want is a, to do this shit in a place that seems less likely for them to do fuck shit in think like a criminal don't be one because that's fucked but think like one where do you think they're gonna do most of the shit at right in a fucking friendly neighborhood place where shit that's bad don't isn't supposed to happen. That's how criminals are fucked. Constantly with my parents. When we weren't all together doing resort activities, everyone for the most part split up. My dad gave all of us money to play games at the arcade inside the activity hall building. My parents... Nowadays, in order to play at fucking arcades, you need fucking tokens. Fucking tokens. You can't use most cash nowadays. Back then, back in the day, what my dad said, they used fucking cents, like five cents or ten cents, to play a fucking arcade game. That was the fucking dream, he says. Nowadays, you gotta fucking do it with tokens because people tend to do weird shit. Parents assumed I was with my older brothers at one point, but I was actually alone just exploring the resort grounds. I walked around the big cement pathway that looped around the entire resort. I passed by some families playing bocce ball, croquet, and other- Can someone in the comments down below tell me what the fuck is bocce ball? What the fuck is that? I never even heard of that. Leave a comment down below. Can someone explain to me what the hell is bocce ball and how do you play that? I don't even know what that is. I mean, yeah, I don't go outside much, but you would- I would think I would know what some shit is and fuck you. Other sports. I was partially looking for my brother. Sorry about that. The reason why I said fuck you is because I had a little fucking restart thing. I do games and stuff, but it was my fucking EA shit. Moving on. Others, or just anything I could do by myself. I started exploring the inside of the activity hall building, and I found the arcade my dad was telling us about. It was actually a pretty impressively sized arcade. It had a bunch of pinball machines and all the standard class. This image isn't impressive, it's fucking terrifying. Except for the Pac-Man though, that's fucking beautiful. But is that fucking Galaga or something? Or Space Invaders? Is this Space Invaders or Galaga? Uh... Pac-Man... I mean, I know most of the basics. I grew up on fucking Mario. My mom... Grew up on fucking Mario and all those shits. I just happened to get the fucking Lola and, you know, like, those fucking old, you know, those old... Oh. What is it? Super Nintendos. Yeah, those old Super NES Super Nintendo things. You know, the things you gotta actually do fucking combinations to play fucking games. Nowadays, it's just beep, boop, 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 like the fucking A button on a fucking Xbox controller. Nowadays, it's that. Back then, it was fucking... Let's just do some fucking maniacal fucking everything that makes no sense. Like, to jump. To fucking jump. I played it. It was fucking confusing. I played Batman Forever on the Super Nintendo. It was the shit, but it was fucking confusing. I never even beat it. I don't even, I don't even think I have the damn thing no more. I got rid of it or sold it or something. You had to, to just grapple gun. You had to press down here I think and press the fucking trigger like the little bumper you have to press those in certain correlations like con not correlations uh synchronization it's a certain synchronization just to fucking grapple gun to grapple gun why can't it just be X or the fucking trigger the fuck the fuck classic arcade machines at the time most of the games were just a quarter to play so I looked around. I told you, fucking five cents or a fucking quarter at the least. The room for a game I wanted to play, and I noticed in one corner of the room the store with this really fogged up looking square glass window in the middle. What the fuck? It was like a special kind of glass that was hard to see through. I thought I could see something through the glass. See what? So I walked a little closer to the door to look through it better, and I saw this humanoid figure standing there, staring through the window. What the fuck? I looked at it for like 15 seconds and it wouldn't move. I could barely see the face of it through the weird glass, but it kind of looked like a Halloween prop. 
It was Halloween season after all. It's all if the person in this story sees this video, please don't judge me. I'm like, who the fuck goes to a fucking building? Out of all the fucking places, of course it's fucking Halloween. I understand. I'm, I'm at, I know. I've been to arcades. I've been to someone's birthday at Chuck E. Cheese because of my nephews. But, but, you know what, I'm not judging, I'm not, I'm, I'm not judging you, I'm judging the fact of who the fuck puts a fucking Halloween decoration in just one area of the building. Think about it. Just think about it. Guys, just think about it. Who in their fucked mind, yes, it's Halloween, so it makes sense, but it only makes fucking sense to put it in the rest of the fucking building if it's the Halloween season. Most people do that. People down here in Louisiana do that. You can see that a lot in Pacific areas. But they put that shit on outside of stores and stuff. So who the fuck puts it in one side of the room knowing is probably allowed to go in it but the fucking employees? Do you see how fucked that is? Pretty, pretty fucking suspicious, I'll tell you that. So that's what I assumed it was. A decoration meant to scare the kids. I walked away to find a game, and ended up playing the Simpsons arcade game. The arcade machine was in the line of sight of that door though, and I couldn't That's help but keep no. looking over to it every few seconds, still seeing that blurred image of the figure on the other side of the door. What the fuck? If it was a decoration, it was doing its job and creeping me out. No, it's doing more than that. It's about to be ripped to fucking shreds. I don't give a shit if it's owned by the place or if that's a decoration or not. Shit must be fucked up. If it's that creepy, here's what I do. If I thought it was a person, I'd be like, bah! And then I realize it's a prop. Ah, shit, I'm probably gonna get fuck. I'm just gonna shut this door. I'm gonna go play fucking games and act like I didn't do shit. That's what you do. But if it's a fucking person and you fucking punch them, and they're down because you punch them so hard, you're gonna be like, what the fuck? Is this man, is this... I'm not sure if it's a man or woman. They're just saying they think it's a prop. You know? It... I quote unquote thing. Most people b don't want to believe there's a person who's that creepy, but it's true. But I would believe it's a prop. But if it's a person, you'd be like, what the fuck is this person or persons doing? Watching fucking kids, man. What the fuck? In such a creepy way, too, motherfucker. After I lost the game, I just had to go back over to the door and look through the glass again. This time putting my face basically right up to the glass. Oh, hell no. I saw the blurred face of the figure standing there. It was a man for sure. The neutral expression on the face suddenly changed to a smile, and I gasped in horror. The fuck? The fuck you? This the fuck this person would, motherfucker? Oh, you smile? You get a butt in the ass. Put a red foreman on this son of a bitch. Butt in the ass style, and then you run like a motherfucker for your motherfucking life. Premise is what I'm trying to say with with little little one to two percent of curse words is like you run for your fucking life like a son of a bitch after you put your boot in this man's ass pinning him down and you run like a motherfucker like the wind that's what you do how long has this fucker been there at least twenty minutes give or take. He might have been there longer. You just probably didn't notice them until you actually came in the room. Then again, who the fuck in there? I know you got sick people, but what type of sick fuck just sits there or just stands there? I think they say it was standing there. Who the fuck just sitting there fucking sick might stands there for like two fucking hours if that's how long they actually been there? The fuck? I, I'm not saying I would be a criminal, but if I was a criminal, the fuck I'm standing there for two hours. If nothing comes, I'd be like, Fuck this, I'm fucking off. I'll go fuck with Chuck E. Cheese. Who the fuck stands here for two hours? The fuck? This band's out for fucking. It was a real person. I ran halfway out of the arcade, then stopped and turned around. The blurred figure on the other side of the door was gone. I slowly walked back to the door and opened it. Why? It brought into this dark hallway. Why? It just had this liminal, unexplainable feeling inside of it, and I was creeped out. You fucking think, Dick Cole? You fucking think? You a dumbass. I'm sorry, but I'm speaking the truth. Please don't be mad. 
but you're a fucking idiot. If you just saw the fucker, they could still be in that room. And you just described the feeling you're having. You, you want to know why you probably have that feeling? It's the fucker still there. Out to kick your ass. You bitch. You dumbass. You dumbass. The fuck? I didn't see anyone in there. You think? But it got so dark, mere feet away from the door, that for all I knew, there could have been someone hiding further down the hall. I went back through the arcade to where no I came shit. in from and went straight back to our room and stayed there till my parents returned. I told them about it, and I'm sure they found it odd. That night, when we all had dinner together in the dining hall, something disturbing happened. I noticed a man sitting alone at one of the nearby tables. He was facing me and looking at me. What the fuck? He had a plate of food in front of him, but I don't remember seeing him eating. When he saw me look back at him, he smiled. Immediately, I thought back to the man I saw on the other side of the door. Even through that blurry glass, it felt like the face and smile matched. Oh, I quietly shit. told my parents about the man, scared, and they looked back at the man, which caused him to stop looking over. My dad told me to just not look in that man's direction. Pretty soon, the man got up and left, and he took one last look at me before he did. I tried my best to look away and pretend not to notice. That was the last time I saw that man on our trip. I look back on it and feel like he was most likely a predator. The way he just stood there still as a statue, watching me for so long. That's just fucked. And that creepy smile. He was there for booty. And he, all he was probably going to get from me is my boot in his ass. We're kicking ass tonight, bitches. The fuck? If I'm right, I hope no children ever fell victim to him. The fuck we will. You kick this motherfucker's ass or you shoot the son of a bitch. I once dealt with a very bad stalker situation as a male when I was 23. I had met this girl Alyssa who was 19. I actually slid in her DMs on Instagram and it went from there. I was surprised she answered me because she had a lot of followers. Oh, shit. We hung out only a few times, but she seemed extremely clingy very quickly, which was a major turnoff for me. Look, I have nothing against people that are clingy, but for fuck's sakes, they... Wait, the way this person just say clingy, I assume it's a man. The way he says clingy, we all know what he means. Uh, it's a bitch we don't date. We be friends with if we can, but we don't date because that shit don't work well. Oh, you can date them all right, but it's gonna bring fucking problems depending on the type of clinginess this bitch is doing. You know? It's kind of how this shit works, you know what I mean? Clinginess, we don't do in dating. I started hanging out with other girls, and as I would get new followers, Alyssa actually texted me angrily about it, as if we were dating. She got- Bitch the fuck she will. The fuck? What you getting angry about? Wait, I don't even date you, you bitch. The fuck you getting angry for? We ain't even dating. It only makes sense if I actually met the woman. She got mad at me for allegedly ignoring her texts, yet my follower count was going up from new girls. It was pretty comical at first, I didn't really let it bother me. I started talking to this girl Meg. As our second date, we decided to go to Dave and Buster's. We drank a little before we went, so when we got there, we already kind of had a buzz going. We were playing the Basketball Connect 4 game. That's when my phone kept going off in my pocket. After the timer on the game ended, I checked my phone and I got three texts from a random number and a picture. The picture was of Meg and I in front of the basketball game. What the fuck? The text said, no way, I'm at Dave and Buster's too. What the fuck? Did this bitch... Is this bitch... Is this bitch following you? Is she out for killing? Is she out for cocaine -um? Is she... Is this bitch high? What the fuck? No, this ain't a stalker. This is a psychopathic, sadistic fuck. The fuck? When I went to text back, I saw the text didn't come from another iPhone, so it most likely meant it was sent from some kind of burner number app. 
looked in the direction from where the picture was taken. Okay, guys, can someone leave a uh, comment down below? I don't even know. I don't know why I'm at. I, I feel dumb, but not dumb. Uh, what the hell is a burner phone number? Wh whatever he, j whatever this man, this person just said. What the fuck is that? I don't know what that is. I know what a burner phone is, but I never heard of a bone burner phone number. Because burner phone numbers don't send burner phones like the phones I'm assuming those are like phones you destroy but what they said is a phone number is that an app or something because I don't fucking know I'm a dumbass for this shit yeah. my first assumption was that it was going to be Alyssa but she wasn't there it was just a few other groups of people playing different games I replied who is this but there was no response I showed Meg the text and picture and she agreed it had to be a friend messing with me we went across the place to a different game, and it happened again, a few minutes into playing this new game. I got a picture texted to me with both of our backs turned to the person taking the picture, and they were maybe like 50 feet away from us when it was what taken. The fuck? It looked blurry though, like it was zoomed in. This time they sent a text saying, my favorite game, can you beat my high score lol. What the I told fuck? Meg to wait there as I walked to the area where the picture was taken from. I looked all around the immediate area expecting to see Alyssa or honestly anyone I knew, but it was just a bunch of strangers. Some random lone guy playing some ticket jackpot game, this group of teenagers playing skee-ball, it was a normal scene. I replied to the text again asking who is this, then I texted a few of my close friends a screenshot of the pictures, of course asking if it were any of them first. I believed them when they said it wasn't. It could have been anyone, but I did not see Alyssa in there. The person responded to my text, who do you think it is? I said maybe we should go to Meg, and she agreed. We left the building and went to my car. I got a text from the number saying, why do you leave? I didn't respond. We went to a nearby bar. No, I would have replied, you fucking do this again? If I find you, your ass is fucked. I will beat the living shit out of you. This is creepy as hell. Keep your ass away from me. Or fucking authorities will be fucking involved after I beat the living shit out of you. Oh no, I'll let you do the fucking first punch. Because I ain't going to fucking jail. Because you should. This is fucking stalking, motherfucker. This is some spooky shit. Hard to continue our date. And after that, Meg actually came home with me. Meg and I were in my room when I got a text again. It was from the same number, another text and picture. The text said, what a lovely house, come out- What the fuck? Police! This is what I do. After I see the text, I'm like, Well, shit. Um, Meg, um, go get a fucking knife. But what? Just get a fucking knife, please. Believe me, get a knife. You're gonna, we're gonna fucking need it. I'm gonna call the cops. Beep, boop, boop, boop. 911, what's your emergency? Uh, yeah, I have a creepy, stalky bitch. Excuse me, sir, what? I have a stalker outside. Oh, do you need the police? Yeah, that's kind of obvious, yeah, pretty much. Like, now. We are scared shitless. This person's been doing this for the longest time, but now they stepped it up a level by following to me, by following us to my house. Send the fucking police, please. If you don't mind, because this bitch is creepy. Yes, we'll send them over. Thank you. And then I hang up the fucking call. Gotta be prepared for everything, motherfucker. This bitch has stepped it up. To the authority level. Outside, and the picture was of my house. The now this was a direct threat. This was not a joke anymore. Call the fucking police! I wasn't sure if whoever it was was still outside my house or not. Call the fucking Until I heard a window break from downstairs. Call I grabbed my Glock 19 from my nightstand and charged downstairs and out the front door. I saw a big guy in front of the house with a big metal baseball bat the in his fuck? hand. He was acting tough until he saw my gun. Then he dropped the bat and put his hands up. I yelled to Meg inside to call 911 as I had my gun pointed at the man. I recognized him to be one of the lone men at Dave & Buster's playing some ticket jackpot game, which now that I think about it, 
He was probably just pretending to be playing. I asked him who he was and why he was following me. He immediately said that he was Alyssa's brother and that basically he was trying to stick up for his sister. I yelled at him that there was nothing to stick up for. All I did was stop answering her. He claimed that Alyssa told him that I hit her, which I screamed at him that was complete bullshit. I only hung out with her a few times and lost interest. I even went as far as to call them both batshit crazy, and he responded saying please don't call the cops. But Meg did, and when they showed up, it was an easy arrest for the police. I also sent a video of the ordeal to Alyssa, which was the sweetest form of a revenge imaginable. She didn't even reply to it, but I know she saw it. Needless to say, Alyssa's psychotic brother paid for the window, and neither of them have dared to bother me again. Cause if they do, you're getting a bullet in the ass, motherfucker. You fuck with me, you fuck with my gun. Plain and simple. Got? Oh, I'm flat. Oh, damn it! I thought I deleted this old browser. With Opera GX, this does- Story 3 when I was a young kid, arcades were a lot more mainstream in society. Before everyone had smartphones and crazy advanced video games at home, going to the arcade was one of the most fun things you could do as a child. There was this arcade right by my school that my friends and I- Atari, Capcom, Mega Man, Extreme 2, Tetris. I play Tetris. Tetris is a cool game. The fuck is that? Is that is that fucking Defendus? Does that say Defender? Defenders or I don't even know. I would often go to after school or on the weekends. One day I went there with my friend Connor right after school. It was kind of quiet there today because it was a stormy day and most kids probably just ran home or got picked up by their parents. So besides a few other kids, we had the place to ourselves. The usual age range of the people there was like ten to upper teens. Connor and I were playing Street Fighter together. When oh, hell yeah. Y'all picked the best game. Street Fighter is the shit. It's the shit. I love that game. I love Mortal Kombat as well. But Street Fighter... Street Fighter's the shit. Especially Street Fighter 2. That one was a good game. And this older guy started watching us play. What the hell? Looking back now, I'd say he was around 35, which to us when we were 10, seemed super old. Yeah, Connor and I looked yeah, at each other and it, smirked because is. we both noticed it and it was kind of awkward. The man started commenting on the gameplay, like cheering us on and having remarks on basically any hits we landed on each other. At first, we laughed, I guess to be polite, thinking he was trying to be funny, but at a certain point it just got weird. Like, he didn't know when to stop and leave. He watched us play the entire match. And had he not been there, we would have played another. But we decided to migrate to something else just to try to get away from him. As we went over to the air hockey tables, the guy was following us and started talking to us. He introduced himself, but I don't remember the name he gave. He offered to pay for our game of air hockey. We were 10 and we viewed our quarters as gold. So we accepted the guy's offer. Even at the fuck I will. At 10 years old, I would have been smart enough to know that I fuck with that shit. When a man offers to pay for shit and you're too young, he's not paying for the game. He's paying to fuck you. This is some serious predatory vibes right now. How do you not see this shit? The fuck? I get you're 10 years old. But don't you think most people teach their kids at 10 years old or 9 years old not to fuck with creepy dicks or not to fuck with strangers that you don't know it's a little fucking hint you know the fuck at 10 we could tell he gave off some kind of antisocial tendencies no shit. he didn't seem completely normal of course, he watched our game of air hockey too and kept commenting on the game as if he were a professional commentator for some sporting event, but it went from annoying to downright creepy when he started making physical contact. It started when I scored a point on Connor, the guy like like congratulated me and put his hand on my shoulder. The hand stayed there for a few seconds actually. Outside I was smiling, inside I wanted to tell him to get lost. I saw it in Connor's face too. 
Anytime one of us scored, he would go over to us and pat us on the back or shake. This is some serious fucked vibes, man. Fuck me. The fucking hell is wrong with people in this world? Why do we got so many sick freaks? The fuck? Come up and pat me on the soldier. At this point, it just feels like you're coming up and patting, pe patting kids in the ass. Which just makes it more predatorial. Fuck me. Can you be even any less fucking obvious that you're a predator? You dick? Then again, there's no fucking way of doing that. But why? Why kids, man? Why fucking kids? Why anybody? Get of age pussy! Or of age things! Fuck me. Take our shoulders. The guy was incredibly freaking weird. No because shit. of it, we decided to cut the arcade trip short. We told the guy we were gonna head home. He then replied saying we'd be crazy to walk in the rain and offered us a ride home. Fuck no. We didn't have cell phones back then, and as kids, we were a lot more independent. So we fully well planned to run home in the rain. We thanked him, but said we live close, so we'll be alright. That was our mistake. Not You dumbass. You just told this motherfucker. You haven't told him your address, but you told him where you might fucking live. Why the fuck did you say that, you dumbass? Just say, no pal, fuck you. Don't act, most ten-year-olds don't know how to curse, but, you know, tell, just tell them, like, an alternative way of saying, no man, fuck you. Be like, no man, I'm sorry, but screw off. We don't want anything to do with ye. Leave us alone. Oh, pain in the end? Lying and saying we had a ride. We left outside into the rain and started to run towards my house. Fucking idiot. Connor was going to come over to hang out. As we were running home, a red car started creeping up from behind us. What the fuck? In a matter that they weren't even trying to hide the fact that they were following us. We looked back at it and could see the man from the arcade behind the wheel. He pulled closer and yelled out his window, telling us to get in. Fuck no. We ignored him and he persisted saying we're getting soaked, get in the car. Hell no! I yelled back, we're good, and we continued to run. We were getting closer to my house. The man suddenly gave the car some gas and sped ahead of us, then pulled over next to the curb where we were about to pass. Connor and I stopped, and I said cross the street. We did, to avoid the man possibly jumping out of his car to grab us. This ordeal made us run even faster to my house. My house was now in sight, and the red car was still behind us. We made it to my front porch, and I rang the bell at least ten times until my mom answered the door. We pointed to the red car, but it was already all the way down the street. We told her about the man who was following us from the arcade, and she was mad that we led him right back to the house instead of ringing one of the neighbor's doors. Bitch, it's your kid! What do you fuck think? You must have not taught your son fucking common sense. Don't be mad at your kid! Be mad at your fucking self, you bitch! You dumbass! A kid don't fuck think that way at 10 years old, dumbass. A 13 year old does. A fucking 14 year old does. That's how kids think when they're 10 years old or too young. They want to go to their mama. Because that's the only people they trust. You dick. Or bells. And she was right to say that. Because the next day when I was leaving to walk to school, I saw that red car parked a few houses down on the opposite side of the street right away. I went inside to tell my parents while my mom called the police, my dad stepped outside and started angrily walking over to the car. As my dad was halfway towards the car, it turned on and sped down the street to never be seen by us again. I had to speak to the police a little bit to describe the man and what he did at the arcade during the walk home and afterwards. Sadly, my dad did not catch the license plate, but they did have the information on what kind of car it was. Still, I don't think they ever found that guy. He was clearly sick in the head. We were not allowed back at that arcade by our parents, and the arcade owner was alerted of that man. Okay guys, and that is three true 
No, wait, let me read that shit again. That is free, really creepy, true arcade horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. As I said, this video was uploaded three days ago. But that's some spooky shit, man. That motherfucker follows you? The fuck? Type of fuck shit? I swear we got some sick fuckers in this world. Either way, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Twizzles.